In the world of the new DC movie, Black Adam, a lot of new characters are being introduced to mainstream audiences, including many characters in the Black Adam mythos, as well as many members of the Justice Society. The Justice Society is a precursor to the modern day Justice League and has had many notable members over the years, including previously explored characters like Black Adam and Cyclone. For this video, I'll be taking a look at Adam Smasher, who unlike some of the other members of the Justice Society, is a little messy and whose ideals conflict with many of the other members of the team. Noah Centineo will be playing Adam Smasher in a new film, and like many of the cast, he is a relative newcomer to these type of movies, as many of his previous roles were in romantic comedy films such as Netflix series of movies to all the boys I've loved before. Just as with my Sandman series, I want to give you guys some background on the characters in a new film, Black Adam, before it premieres in October. In terms of the Justice Society, many members of the team are Golden Age heroes like Wildcat, Our Man, the original Green Lantern, and the original Flash, while others are descendants of the heroes like Stargirl, Jade, and Obsidian. Adam Smasher's origin are quite different actually. Adam Smasher, also known as Albert Rothstein, is the grandson of Cyclotron. Cyclotron, real name Terry Curtis, was a scientist in the 30s and 40s who was kidnapped by DC villain Ultra Humanite. Humanite experimented on him and exposed him to radiation, which gave him his superpowers. He was used by the villain to fight against another supergroup called the All-Star Squadron. Now I realize that this is a lot of information to take in, but it's about to start making sense. One of the heroes that Curtis fought against was called Adam, whose exposure to Cyclotron's powers also gave him his own superpowers. Adam served as an inspiration to Rothstein and was his godfather. Cyclotron later tried to redeem himself by taking Humanite into the atmosphere and blowing himself up. Adam later remodeled his suit after the late Cyclotron. Curtis's daughter had a son, Albert, who inherited his powers from his grandfather. These powers included super strength, increased stamina and speed, as well as durability. One of the more well-known powers is his ability to grow in size, similar to how Ant-Man grows in the Marvel comics and movies. However, unlike Ant-Man, he can grow to 60 feet with little effort, due to the fact that his bones and muscles break and reform as he grows in height. Added to that, his strength and body density grow in proportion to his height. That being said, even at his base form, he is pretty formidable, with some comics depicting him standing at 7 foot 6 inches and with super strength. Before continuing, I want to thank you guys for watching and hit that like button if you're enjoying the video so far. Comment below on any other characters from the Black Adam series you would like to see covered, as well as any other DC characters you want to know more about. Check out my channel for more DC stories, but for now, let's get back to Adam Smasher. Albert began his superhero journey using another alias, Nukon. As Nukon, he fought in the superhero team known as Infinity Inc. Infinity Inc. has a long history which I don't plan on going over at the moment, but they're basically the teen titans of the Justice Society, as most of the members are kids or sidekicks of the JSA. During his time in this group, Albert had a mohawk haircut. He later joined the Justice League and formed a bond with fellow member Obsidian, who is also the son of the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott. During the reformation of the Justice Society, Albert was invited to join and change his identity to Adam Smasher in honor of his godfather, the original Adam. See, I told you all that backstory would make sense. He also makes fun of his old mohawk, which is a pretty cool callback to his time as Nukon. During this time, we start seeing the cracks in Adam Smasher's character, as an incident with his mother leads to the death of the villain Extent, which labels him a murderer and brews distrust among his teammates. The next bit is probably the lead into what we'll see in the new Black Adam movie. At some point in this run of JSA Comics, a reformed Black Adam joins a team. Initially, Adam Smasher refuses to believe that Adam has changed, but things start to change when Black Adam sympathizes with Adam Smasher as he justifies the actions that led to the death of the villain Extent. They form a friendship that leads to the death of another villain Cobra and also the death of the Dictator of Conduct. The death of Conduct's leader is important as it's the lead-in for Black Adam to take over the country. The interesting part of Adam Smasher in relation to Black Adam is that their friendship continues beyond this and the comics show a continued support between the two. I do hope that the DCEU shows this aspect of their relationship because I do think the friendship, at least on Adam Smasher's end, really gives a character an arc and growth throughout his appearances as he deals with dueling ideals 
between those of the Justice Society and Black Adam. Something I want to note is that although this is the first appearance of the movie for Adam Smasher, he has appeared in other things before, such as the Justice League Unlimited series and the Justice League Animated series, specifically during an episode where the JLA meets the Justice Guild of America, which were based on the JSA. As far as live action though, Albert Rothstein did appear in a Flash episode for the CW series, portrayed by professional wrestler Adam Copeland, which some of you may know as the ultimate opportunist Edge from WWE introduced a villainous version of the character from Earth 2. Adam Smasher here kills his Earth 1 counterpart and is eventually killed when he attacks the Flash. Smasher later tells Barry that Zoom sent him to kill him. This appearance was pretty cool, even though it had nothing to do with the history of the character in comics, but keeping characters like this in bit parts in TV shows and cartoons is important as it creates interest from audiences. As I mentioned before, I think the focus of the Adam Smasher character will be the invasion of conduct, but we have to wait to see how DC will be using him in the new film. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Adam Smasher and if you think DC will do justice to the character. But for now, take care and have an awesome day. For more DC stories, why not start with this video right here?